In this video, we're going to see how do we use the norm inverse function in Excel. So norm inverse is mathematically the inverse of norm dist. So with norm dist, we told Excel the point and it gave us the value or the area to the left. With norm inverse, what we're going to do is we're going to tell Excel the area to the left along with the mean and the standard deviation. And then Excel is going to give us the point associated with having that much area to its left. So the difference between these two is we use norm dist anytime we know a value and we're trying to find the probability associated with it. We use norm inverse anytime we know the probability or we know a percentage and we're trying to find the point associated with it. So to tell the difference, you've got to read the question and see, is it asking for a probability? In which case use norm dist. Or is it giving me some type of percentage or probability and asking for a value or a point, in which case we'll use norm inverse. So here we have the same setup that we worked with in the norm dist video, where thermometers temperatures at freezing are normally distributed with a mean temperature of zero degrees Celsius and a standard deviation of one degree Celsius. So we've already recognized this as the standard normal distribution because the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So our first question says, what temperature separates the bottom 5% of thermometers? So it's asking for a percentage and it's saying what temperature, what number gets you in that bottom 5%. This is an inverse scenario. We're given a percentage, we're trying to find a value. And so the way we use norm inverse is we do equals norm inverse, and then we tell it the area to the left of the point we're looking for. Well, if you visualize your curve and color in the bottom 5%, you're coloring in the bottom 5% of the graph that's the area on the left. So the area that represents the bottom 5% is the area to the left of this unknown point. So I'm going to say there's going to be 0.05 area or 5% below it. And then our mean is zero, our standard deviation is one. So if a thermometer has a reading at zero of negative 1.6449 degrees Celsius, it's in the bottom 5% of registering thermometers. You know, if we're looking for the top 5%, again, let's visualize our curve. If we color in the top 5%, that's going to be coloring in the 5% of the graph at the very, very top, which is on the far right-hand side. So we can't put the area to the right into norm inverse. We've got to, again, go and remember that in the whole graph, there's 1 or 100% of the area. So if there's 5% on the right, that leaves everything else on the left. So the area to the left of this point is going to be 0.95 or the complement of what's on the right. So if we've got 5% on the right, the complement, which is what's on the left, is the 95%. So we'll do 0.95 comma the mean of zero comma standard deviation of one to see that if the thermometer reads 1.6449 degrees at zero, it's in the top 5% of temperature readings. Let's look at another one. The mean weight of one-year-old girls is normally distributed with a mean weight of 24.4 pounds and a standard deviation of 0.5 pounds. We want to know how much does a one-year-old need to weigh to be in the 99th percentile. Now, if you remember from the beginning of this course, we talked about percentiles, and percentiles tell you the proportion or the percentage below. So if a kid is in the 99th percentile, that means they weigh more than 99% of the other kids. So the area below them, or the percentage below, is 99. So since that would represent the area to the left, we can do norm inverse area to the left, which is 0.99, comma the mean of 20.4, comma the standard deviation of 0.5. So if a girl weighs 21.56 pounds, she's in the 99th percentile, meaning she weighs more than 99% of all one-year-old girls based on this data. And then if it asks, how much does a one-year-old need to weigh to be in the 10th percentile? Well, the 10th percentile means that this kid weighs more than 10% of other kids. So 10% is below them. So if we visualize the graph, that means the bottom 10% is colored in, or the area on the left is 10%. So again, we can do norm inverse, area to the left, which is 0.10, comma the mean, comma the standard deviation, to see that if a kid weighs 19.7592 pounds, she's in the 10th percentile.